But let's go out to New York City now, see if she's left her apartment. Julie Stewart Bings joins us. JSB. No, she hasn't. She is still in her Manhattan apartment. How are you doing, Julie? Hey, I am doing very well, Rod. And I'm in my apartment, but I actually moved during the quarantine, like right after I talked to you guys. At, I guess it was the middle of March. It feels like either a day ago or 10,000 days ago. <laughs> I don't even know anymore. But I moved just down the street. I thought, you know, I'm going to pack up during the worst time in the world to move. And I have literally been in this studio apartment. So it's just one room for the last whatever four months. So you know, um, it's not the kind of lifestyle that I uh, that I prefer. I'm more of a go out to karaoke at 4 a.m., go on to restaurants, all that kind of stuff. But I've learned to adapt. And, of course, we're all doing this for the good cause. And I, this is, if anyone out there is wondering, this is, uh, this is my guy. This is our governor, Andrew Cuomo. I am a Cuomo-sexual. Uh, and I am uh, I'm, I'm very glad that we we have done a good job here in New York at flattening the curve, but we're not done yet. So just got to keep going. Well, it was pretty crazy at the outset of this. You're right. But it seems to have calmed down. And Julia, look, when you talk about being in jail basically for four months, it just dawned on me the other day. I'm like, is this the new normal? Is this what it's going to be? And I'm like, no, it's not because sports is kind of back. And I know that's what you want to talk about this morning with us. And we will talk about that. The MLS, Major League Baseball, all the rest. But what caught my attention was your Twitter the other day that you saw a guy peeing in the street uh, in Times Square, or at least in Manhattan. Listen, here's what came to mind for me. I hope you don't mind me bringing this stuff up. You tweeted it. My oh, my wife God. I, I, don't, I don't mind you bringing it up. It's just I have PTSD over it right now. I'm sorry. Well, awful. but the thing is, I was walking on West 37th Street with my wife. It was nighttime. It was in the shadow of Empire State Building. And this guy in a suit, not drunk. Just whipped it out and started going right in the street. And I'm like, yeah, I was going to yell something. And my wife was like, no, just keep going. Just keep going. I'm like, but the guy is urinating right in the middle of the street. And she's like, just keep walking. I realized it's a New York thing. And you wonder why it has that smell. So I'm shocked that yeah. you were so shocked. Well, who was the guy? Aren't you going to tell Some business guy. The boy's a big name. He must be. No, it wasn't. Go ahead, Julie. The thing is, exactly like what your wife said, you just cannot encourage it. You just can't can't <laughs> add any fuel to the fire. If you see it, they want you to they want you to see it and, and talk about it. And then you end up getting into some weird discussion with someone that doesn't really know everything that's going on at that moment. But I was actually on the phone with my mom just walking up like sixth avenue or something and then i just see i was like oh there's a guy peeing like first of all that's normal but then it was like there's a guy peeing and walking i'm like okay that's i don't want to be near that and then he was peeing and running and me and these two other he was looking at us and like chasing us and so me and these other two women were like we almost started laughing because we were just like in hysterics like we got to get away from this guy that's chasing us and peeing and to the point that, like, we literally just ran in front of traffic and dodged it. Like, I don't care if I get hit by this car right now. I'm not having this guy pee on me at this moment. So when I tweeted about it, everyone's like, oh, well, welcome to New York. I'm like, no, listen, that's not a welcome to New York moment. I've lived in this city now for coming up on three years. And, yes, I've seen my share of weird stuff going on. But a guy peeing and chasing you while he's peeing is is a lot. That's not necessarily everyday stuff. But, fast you know, you? you've been inside the whole time. You realize you forget what New York's like outside. Like, it's still it's still so disgusting here. Um, and I think it's almost you're 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 more sensitive, sensitive to it now because you're like, we're all worried about germs. We're worried about people wearing masks, all this kind of stuff. And so then you see New York is so disgusting. And then there's also a pandemic. You're like, wait, why am I living here again? Um, and it's also super expensive. So. These are just a few of uh, my favorite things about living in the Big Apple. Well, listen, I often ask my wife if we could go anywhere when the pandemic's over, where do you want to go? And she says New York. And I'm like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> I like sun. I like space. I like, you know, being able to swing my arms. Ah, I don't get it. Yeah, but no. Moving on, John O'Flynn's watching in Vancouver, and we will talk sports, people, I promise. But he says that is quite – he's watching in Vancouver. He says that's quite the impressive liquor cabinet over your shoulder there. Do you want to talk about <laughs> drinks with Binks and some of the things that you're doing now in this wonderful world of broadcasting? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I mean, I, I realize it is a little bit over here. I got, um, I've got everything, really. Uh, I even have a glass that says uh, drinks with Binks on it. Sweet. I got my own glass, a little drinks with Binks, because that's what we do. And things have been going well with it. To be honest, 
most of my guests, because I always have the guest pick whatever drink they want, they've been going uh, on the non-alcoholic side. And so that's great because you can have a great time with spin drift, with any kind of seltzer. And today's show, I have former MLB pitcher CJ Nikowski on, and we just had a cold brew and it was great because then you can actually form sentences. I still have a difficult time while I'm sober doing that anyway, but at least it lends me to be in a good position. So we've had a great time with it. Um, kind of like your show right now where I can just click a link and come on from New York City across the, the continent in a sense. I can have, I've been able to have way better guests on just it, it, the ease of it is it works well in quarantine rather than having to get someone to come in studio uh, by uh, getting them a car service, all that kind of stuff. So it's been good. We, I'm actually going to Canada tomorrow. I'm going to Toronto for uh, probably about a month. I'm going to quarantine for two weeks in downtown Toronto and then see my family, but I can do all my shows from there. So then it makes you think, well, then why are you spending $5,000 for like one room in New York City when you can then now for us, like my show is remote, so can kind of do it from wherever. And I got to say, though, Roddy, like it's wild to see the three of you guys in person together in a studio because like I haven't seen my coworkers in four or five months, which has been amazing. But, I mean, it's the fact that you guys can just be right there is a testament also to how well Canada has handled this. Right, and we're not stacked literally on top of each other like New Yorkers are. <laughs> I mean, you you were here long enough that you know what it's like. By the way, my mind was racing when you said you were talking to your mom and you're going to see her. I knew that she had a cool name. It's Georgie, right? Yeah, Georgie Binks. Kind of like I Jar Jar thought. Binks. But, <laughs> no, yeah. that's what we call you, Jar Jar. Or some people yeah. do, anyways. The That's worst the cool Star nickname. Wars character ever. Yeah. yeah. Eh, I wouldn't go that far. Um, and I really like Boba Fett. But yeah, I know <laughs> we were going to talk some sports, believe it or not, with you, because that's what we're supposed to do. And my mind flashed to you being at Super Bowl last year in South Beach and how awesome it looked in Miami. This year it's in Tampa. Do you think we're going to have one? Um, it is... Uh, it's going to be tough right now. I mean, I interviewed NFL insider Adam Schefter from ESPN, and he was of the guys that, like, you know, this is going to be very difficult for this season to start on time. I think we understand that, especially with all signs pointing to a second wave and with a number of states not taking this as seriously. So then it just lingers on, right? It's, I've used this analogy before, but like you're not going to have a beach body if you just keep eating bad food. You have to do the hard thing to get the good thing to come back. And so um, a Super Bowl in Tampa, the good thing is for the NFL is they're just literally pushing the day back. So whether the Super Bowl happens in February or March or April or May, like they they definitely have time on their side and just the fact that the schedule is that way. And who knows at that point, like, do we have access to a vaccine? Do we have any of these different things? But the hardest part, and when I did talk to Adam, and I also had Nina Kimes on from ESPN as well, is that there isn't necessarily a contingency plan for the NFL. So like we've seen with the NHL, with NBA, with MLS having the bubble and not necessarily playing in their home stadiums, and MLB is doing that, so the NFL is looking toward that, is that they don't have, uh, they don't have a plan B. So as we've seen, if a training camp gets shut down because of a, a lockdown somewhere, all the training camps have to be shut down. And you guys would like this, but Mina, who, if for those of you who don't know, she is recently named NFL analyst on NFL Live on ESPN. Brilliant, awesome follow. She's like, we should have the NFL in Canada. Like, we should move everything to all the CFL stadiums. And I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, don't bring your garbage up there. Like, they, uh, they've been doing things well, you know, we can't can't just be be allowing everyone to just come up there but i thought that was fascinating people are thinking hey there's we've got some stadiums we've got you know very limited coronavirus up there why don't we bring the nfl as long as it's not winnipeg i guess <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly well supposedly the cfl is going there we got a lot of viewers questions have come in i'm gonna allow one from gregory lee he says uh julie you were great on fox sports west with the ducks do you still keep in touch with John Allers and Kent French? 
Oh yeah, Johnny and Frenchie. I talked to those guys uh, a lot. Was able they, in, they included me in a lot of their Zoom calls over the break. I still, you know, I miss definitely being a part of the game and being there for everything. It kind of sucks to be a sideline reporter right now, but I think that the role will become increasingly more important because you do need, uh, you know, someone who's able to be on the ground if the broadcasters can't be there and whatnot. But I loved my time with the Ducks organization. I've had many different jobs as like my career has just been this like uh, continuous comeback tour that just like never really fulfills itself. And being with the Ducks, we had that TV crew, we had the most fun. No one took themselves too seriously. We razzed each other all the time. We just went to every city and got super drunk, and it was the best job I've ever had. So I miss those guys a lot. And uh, and also the Ducks were great, too. And I've I've maybe I've mentioned this before, but, like, Ryan Getzlaff was always – super respectful and super kind to me. And even when I was kind of dealing with some personal stuff in my career, he was like, Hey, you know, we all think that like you are the utmost uh, professional and we think that like, we're so happy to have you here. And I remember being like, that's a good Regina boy right there. You know, like he, he knows how to, how to treat people well. So I he absolutely love does. He absolutely does. And it is a great organization. Julie, before we let you go, mm-hmm. where can people watch your stuff and, and obviously follow you? Yeah, uh, I, my show, Drinks with Binks, is it's free. It's on FuboSportsNetwork.com. You can literally just type that into your computer right now. It's probably playing literally all the time. And Fubo TV, if you don't know, it's a cable streaming service. So you can get, like, all your channels on this thing, and it's also available there. But then I always put the clips out on my Instagram, on Twitter, JSB underscore TV, and Julie SB underscore. Awesome stuff. Well, enjoy your your visit home. Stay safe, Julian. I appreciate you uh, finding some time for us today. Yeah, thanks for having me on. I'm looking forward to being in a a different jail cell in Toronto for two weeks before then being able to see my family. What a world. All right. Thanks, Julie. JSB joining us from Manhattan today. You're watching Rod Peterson On Demand. For more of The Rod Peterson Show, visit rodpeterson.com or follow Rod Peterson on social media. 